this is going to be the sort of video that's either going to be very simple and very short job done see you next time or it's going to be long and horrible and who knows what we'll find because we have a Dyson DC50 that I have been given to try and fix apparently the owner is actually a neighbour of somebody I know very well so it all their friend, the neighbour, tried to take it apart because it wasn't working right. Couldn't get it back together. So, ow. Let's see what there is. Get it back together and see if we can work out why it wasn't working properly in the first place. And, well, give it a bit of a titivation. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Almost straight from work this, which is where I got this person, is somebody who I work with, his elderly neighbour, tried to have a fiddle, not with that, and well, here we go. It is a Dyson DC50. No, sorry, no, I lie, it is a UP15. Ah! It's the newer small ball. So it's not a DC50 as such, it is. It is a Dyson small ball. So this is what the DC24 turned into. And it is a fair bit better than a DC24. This is exactly how it came out of his car. It's how it came out of my car. And here we go. So the flex has obviously been bundled up for quite some time. Possibly because the lower cord hook is missing. Apart from that, we have the clean head over here, which I can already see isn't together properly at all. The cyclone, which actually seems relatively okay. And a bag of bits. What do we have in the bag of bits? We have ah, the other ball shell. The small tools. This only seems to take one, I think. There's two small tools and ugh, this disgusting, horrible thing from a Vax, actually. This is a Vax two-in-one tool. As you can see, oh, if I put it closer to the camera, look, superb. Vax quality, as always. This won't be that old. And already it is knackered. So we'll put that back in there. I won't be keeping that. I don't need it. It's too worn. We also have this, which is the internal hose from this machine. <laughs> this is where I'm because really quick or really not quick. I, just, I, I don't quite know what's wrong with it. Let's have a look. I mean, poor thing has been heavily used. There is a piece of glitter there. The filter is quite full of smeg. But... Yeah, we'll put that back on for now. We also should probably put back on is the internal hose. I mean, it might have been that that caused the issues in the first place. They do have a habit of falling off. And to clip it back in should be quite simple. I'm hoping it should just push in. And then if we move the wheels and fish it back out with your fingers it just drops into the little slot it's ever so fiddly but i really don't want to strip this all apart just to put the lower hose back on there we go so we'll screw this back on just because why not it needs to go back on and um, then we have to put this back together and it's missing one of the clips, there's a clip that side, there's not a clip this side. I don't know how old this would be. I don't, it, it can't be very old. Typically, there are no black brush strips on the damn thing at all, and the red are worn down to pretty much nothing. So it's nice to see that they've just that from the DC50. Flipping Dyson. Uh, the head 
as usual, is completely clogged up with hair and fluff. It's all in there, look, all in that join. We'll worry about that in a minute. I'm not doing anything until we can safely say that this is working. And to do that, I've got to try and get... Ah, there we go. That back on, I've no idea. See, that, that missing clip really isn't doing it any good at all, really. And I'm not quite sure. Oh, they do just pop off. Look, here's one there. So, at least getting hold of another one will be okay. What do we have? We have a receipt for five pence for a boots bag from last year. I don't think that's got anything to do with this, though. No. So the cleaner head fits back on. Ugh, the, the usual splattering of awful dust everywhere. These really are hateful machines. I shall stay on the fence about that. We'll put that on. Let's take the wand out quickly. The hose isn't torn. So that's okay. But this isn't going to be a full refill. Although I'm going to mention the missing parts. You know, maybe get a price online. We'll see. But for now, to leave you standing there whilst I untangle this horribly knackered flex. Well, it's not knackered, it's just bent. Really. And plug it in. Touch the wise, it's fine. Apart from not really doing anything at all, it's doing absolutely nothing as far as you know the brush is concerned. But that's because the brush is several shades of completely dead. What I have just noticed though is that the changeover valve isn't fully turning. So we'll spin this off again. And no, it's not turning at all. Oh, why are you not turning? Maybe it is turning. Oh, but there is a load of rubbish caught around it. Oh, no, it's gentle and metal free. Whatever. I'm, I'm presuming that was the only issue there. Yeah. There is still an air leak somewhere, which isn't fantastic. And it's this internal hose. Wonder. I'm hoping it's not missing a seal or something. But this is how simple vacuum cleaning repair can be. Literally just a case of putting it together and checking. Although, again, the only problem with these newer machines is that because it is a fairly involved job, just to get to the other end of this little hose does make me not want to really do it too much. It must be something simple. 
so we shall find my favourite flat blade screwdriver. And we'll just, well, we're going to take this hose back out because I want to see. No, right, it has its seal. There is a little rubber seal buried in there somewhere. There's no rips or tears on the hose. Oh, let me just shut this door. I've got the washing machine on. I don't know, I've made a racket. I wasn't fully expecting to film this tonight, but I thought, oh, it would be a nice, <laughs> quick, simple job to do. Problem is, this big tab here on this side has to clip in. Oh, I don't think it's going to clip in thunderously easy without being able to see the back of it, which is such a pain in the bum. We'll clip that side in. Gonna see if I can manipulate. I can't even see the red clip now. Let's try that. That's better. That's much better. So we do actually have now a fully working, if not completely tired, Dyson UP15. Is it UP15 mag? No idea what that means. It's an 850 watt job. I think the thing to do now is to get old Benchy out because we still, I still haven't looked it's, uh, oh, I've just done some washing as well, so it's absolutely chock full of crap in here. This really won't be helping. Oh, I'll just put a load of washing on. I, could, I, I should have waited and put this in. Hold on. It can be done in the sink. We'll leave Benchy though, because buried in here is, and we'll see if I can show you. No, oh, I can't. There's a there's a big wadge of, as per usual with these filters, crud stuff down the bottom, which we need to hope that Benchy can get out. So let me get set up and we'll give it a bit of a going over. So I have my collection of not fully doing a fantastic job, cleaning spray and the bench vac. So, um... Well, we'll start with this filter, because at least we can get the machine itself back together. Um, there's not a lot more you can do than just vacuum it off, try and... get in there as much as you can. I've got completely the wrong spray for this. We'll give that a clean because that, that seal is utterly ruined really. There we go. Clean this. If you get a nice clean seal, I always say this with Dyson, they need their seals spotless to work at all really. And it's such a simple little job. But can make all the difference. Let's move you out of the way. We'll get to you in a minute. So there we go. That's the filter back on. We'll take the hose out because I want to check if there's any more clogs. And there's not. Well, I can see straight through the hose now. So that's okay. We shall a foaming spray and it doesn't then go onto the cloth very well and obviously I don't want to blob loads of it on here. We'll get there's two seals here either side. They're critical to be cleaned. It's these seals leaking that causes all this. Always has been. On the balls and probably always will. You just have to use it for a while to really see it happen. 
There's that. The hose is fine. Again, it can just be put back in, really. So we need to have a look at another cord hook. I can go in there. Oh, this filter. Try and get the worst out. <laughs> Thin pliers. No, that's the side. Ah, there's some of it. Yeah, the whole filter sort of twisted inside. I don't know quite why. I don't know if there's any more in there. I can still feel something, but I suppose it could just be the bottom of the filter material. This is so fiddly, I, I feel like a surgeon. I'm just not really saving any lives. The, right, the screwdriver is now down the bottom. Well, I think that is actually all that's going to come out with a poke. <laughs> That's that. Next, two, which will empty the bin. attention to all the rubber seals because a machine like this with a lower than normal motor anyway really does need all the help it can get to keep itself airtight and working well and if you feel that your well, Eddie Dyson is lacking a certain something this might help so there we go well then Clean the rubber seals down here again, they're so filthy. Rubber on plastic needs to ideally be spotless and with a bagless you're never going to get that at all. I mean don't do this every single time you empty it, that's a little bit pointless. As most of you probably know, if you've watched my channel before and collect vacuum cleaners and repair Dysons, this is the result of you know, a couple of months of use. But it does not hurt to do it every, say, six months or so. Just rub over everything as well as you can. We'll give the inside of the bin a bit of a wipe just so it can go back looking as nice as possible. And I might get a recommendation and some more work out of this person who I have no idea who it is. <laughs> They're always the best ones, but you just don't know. Now that's a bit strange, there is a lot of slop, although once the bins on there's not, so I suppose that's understandable. And then we can put the cyclone back on, there is no filter. Ooh. Much, much better. So we'll put the wand back on, we don't need that, and then we'll draw our attention, fine, don't stand up, 
to the base plate because again it's quite filthy but this just needs exactly the same work that they all need all of these Dysons with this pivoting head always do this and you'll see now and I'll try and pile it up and as soon as we start digging huge big chunks of fluff will come cascading out and there isn't really any way I don't think to fully separate these you can sort of get behind everywhere and edge it out but the whole lot doesn't just split this screwdriver is a little bit too big actually ah here we go here's a DC04 switch removal tool That's better. It's really just a case of, I mean, we can pop that clip off there and get this big chunk of crap out from behind. I mean, I don't know, Dyson obviously don't seem to care because they haven't revised this in any way since it all came in on, I think, the DC40, but I could very well be wrong there. Oh. Again, this is something that you're going to need to do probably once a year. And you do notice the difference. I did. I first found out about it. I had a DC40. Some of my viewers may remember. And I used it for a month. And I wasn't that impressed with it. Until I then refurbished it to sell it after using it for a month. And found this. And it absolutely transformed it. Really did. And ever since then, I have found that if I just do this first before I even turn the machine on it stops me hating it so much there we go look lots in there yeah who knows if Dyson's in the future will address this I have to say the cordless you know the V11 torque head does have a completely different design so it's probably only going to be a problem on the corded machines that are left and I don't think Dyson care about those very much Ooh. right let's clean up way to do this I mean I got a little bit out with the vacuum but only because you know everything's already been loosened up there you go there's huge chunks of fluff in there as well this is the glory this is this is the <laughs> On this front bit, underneath the blue blade that makes the head, you know, max or min, etc. And again, I, I know that I can take the mechanism apart, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I 
like taking all the part because it's all oh that's put it all back together again. Oh, there's just a little bit in there. This is possibly why it'll be this and a clogged filter, basically. And perhaps that remains of that blockage. That's as good as I'm going to get that. There's still those in there, and it's all in the mechanism for this. Although, I can't imagine this has been moved very much ever. So, meh, it's probably okay. We shall then, because that is disgusting, clean the base plate itself, because why the devil not, eh? This is just dirty carpets, I'll be honest, but mine do it. The, the Tinko Pure 1S12 with its white base plate is just appalling. If you don't have spotlessly clean, you know, to the point that you wouldn't have even walked on it. The flooring, which is just silly. Really. There we go, I'll give that a wipe down, wipe all of that down. Get in there good. Now, I um, I can't actually take this off without screws, really? Well, there is a Phillips screw. And from what I know about Dyson, sorry, the washing machine will be finished in a minute. A Phillips screw denotes a user serviceable part. As in, you know, we want you to take this apart. To do it so we're going to roll with that and take this end screw out i've no idea how this all comes out i've never had a light bulb before oh there we go look oh gosh <laughs> and that all comes off like that so i would also assume there is some sort of way to get that off but oh wow look at that There is lots of hair in there. Uh, we'll get a knife. I know that they probably have fixed this now because my B11 has the same sort of setup and doesn't do this, so at least they seem to have sorted that. Right, let's clean out in here. <laughs> That's one thing the V11 still does though, and that's fill itself up with dust. And again, you can't really clean, you know, the hood because you can't get in there. And that's a big shame. That's very annoying. So that is as good as we can get that, whereas if we could get in there, it would be a fair bit better. So we'll pop that back. And it's got to lock itself down. There we go. And we'll do the screw up. And then fiddle it back together. Helps if the little pin for the wheel isn't poking out so it fouls the housing. There we go, make sure that the hinge is over and then yeah, all we can really do is do the one clip and not the other, which isn't going to be helping matters at all. But, oh, we'll refit it. Check it still runs. You see that's now running itself down. Quite well, that has transformed it because again this can now move. 
Right, well I shall get the filter washed and we'll come back and finish off the video. A couple of days later we find ourselves back with the Dyson small ball up 15 because I had words with the owner via the person who gave it to me and they do not want to buy a new lower cord for it but they said that I could improvise so what do you think? I reckon it might work quite well. All we've got to do is take off the cable and the cyclone so that we can get the hose back off. There we go. Then we take our Dremel and a drill bit. ourselves a small pilot hole then we can screw our very high quality possibly brass cup hook into here now it does poke out just a little bit but it's poking out into all of this dead space here at the bottom of the hose so I think rather than having to cut it down we might get away with just refitting it, he says. There we go. There we go. Granted, the hose won't come back out now, but it, it, it won't have punctured it or anything. So we can put the wand back on then for the first time in a long time we might be able to wind the cable up on this machine now i don't fully agree with this oh goodness with this hack i'll i'll be honest yes it's a thing you can do but the cord hook itself is a terror and i suppose here yeah, if you've got other stuff to be done like this has i mean she was into it just for me troubleshooting it and we have bought another new part so don't worry too much I can sort of see both sides against it. It's not something I personally do, but you cannot deny that that is holding the cable like a champ. And it will still work as a drop-off cable with the top cord hook. So that is actually all we're doing with that part of the machine. Next we need to ow, smash yourself in the toe with a Dyson. We've got to concentrate on this. Because one of the things that I did insist that she, you know, the owner needed to buy was a new brush roll. Now this isn't a genuine brush roll, it's a pattern brush roll. And those black strips are, you know, softer than soft. They really are. The red ones aren't too bad. But obviously it is a flip side better all round. Than this one, which has none. Oh, I forgot to be screwdriver. If I lean stealthily over, I can fetch one, and we can have the old brush roll out. A very cheap part. This cost just over, or just under, fifteen pounds. And yeah, you can tell the difference straight away in both the red. Don't know if this doesn't pop off like the other ones because so you can take the brush strips out but yeah the red brush strips are twice as long the black brush strips are twice as long although they're not carbon fiber you can tell because this is my torque head from the other Dyson and if I can try and oh you need a flipping screwdriver to do this Oh, gosh, my unpreparedness. I just want to show you the difference in the carbon bristles. Obviously, one isn't actually carbon bristles. There we go. Oh, nice to know that my bit that broke is filling itself full of hair again. Is it actually broken? No. That is good. Anyway, I'm not on about the V10, V11. Although, 
we will get rid of that. Now, what about the carbon brushes? Because the actual Dyson carbon brushes, I mean, they're angled now, but they weren't. They do have some substance to them. They are still very, very soft, but, you know, they do at least have some bite. These are just, I mean, I can make them move by breathing on them. But, saying all that, of course, and all things being equal, and hopefully it's the right one and it fits... The other side problem, they are all different. No, I think that is correct. And I can see where the spindle needs to go. There we go. Oh, bit of a fit, but got there in the end, so we can put that back on. And throw this in the bin. Marvellous. Now on to the last bit that is missing, which is this red clip. Now I've asked about, I asked Mr. Stewart at, Man <coughs> at Manchester Vax. He didn't think they had any. Couldn't buy one on its own. You have to buy the whole head. So, again, in consultation with the owner, we decided that I can just put... Some tape, yes, everybody's favourite hateful tape, around where I think it needs to go. Now, you've got to be a bit careful because you don't want to catch the pivoting head, pivoting part, or, well, you'll have to, we, we fix that. Don't want to do it again, but obviously you do want to then tape down the head quite well. Again, it's such a bodge, but then you think that, yeah, you could be spending 20, 30 quid on an entire second head to fix it. I can see the appeal of just, you know, just some hidden sellotape. So we have bodged, bashed and repaired this DC small ball. I keep wanting to call it a DC 50. Let's get it set up. We'll bring you back a bit and we'll see how it works. We're plugged in, so we'll lift up the machine and check if it works. Oh, and already it's pulling itself down a lot better to the carpet. And I dare say it's trying to groove as well. It's not the best. Although this rug isn't the best either. I would have bit that. Hey, it's, it's working, folks. Look, there you go. You can see the difference compared to when we tried it before. And we're not even back. Oh, oh I'll, I'll match. That's quite good. It's like the B11. It hasn't got much suction, but it makes a difference. That head's quite difficult to move, so we'll just leave it in normal. But yeah, that isn't bad. I mean, I wonder what it's like on a deep pile carpet. This. Oh, that's almost difficult to push. That's very difficult to push. Let's put it into minimum. The amount of difference just taking all the fluff out of the brush roll housing and a new brush roll has made to that machine is astonishing. So, there we go. 
few more troubleshooting tips for the quite frankly not very nice dice and small ball although this one at least just worked very well now still flimsy though it can go back to its owner i can get paid and we can move on with life huh. all done thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and i but not this dyson shall see you soon bye bye